Morning folks, Brian here, Geomagnetic Earthwatch, Monday, January 19, 2026. We have an updated space weather report for the uh, coming uh, solar storm impact. We'll go through the timing. Please uh, remember, this is plus or minus approximately six hours. This is only a forecast model, an opinion. So here is NOAA's uh, forecast. Obviously a fast moving coronal mass ejection. And NASA's. Now, so far, and this will change, it always changed. This is just a forecast model for the geomagnetic instability solar storm, which for day, uh, for today is uh, they are predicting it to be a G4 severe geomagnetic storm. Always assume the possibility it could be the next and final level up a G5 extreme geomagnetic storm. This is a forecast. This is actually the forecast, the timing. We'll go through the timing in just a moment here. Uh, before I do, so we've already reach, uh, reached S3 and passed S3, severe proton flux, radiation storm levels. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's go to the uh, forecast model, a suggestion and when the uh, instabilities are going to reach us. Let's just run it. Sun, Earth, Stereo A, satellite. So according to this model, uh, we are going to receive an impact, but the density is just going to skim past the side of Earth, as you can see here. So there's two things we need to watch out for. The CME impact here, but also the increased accelerated solar winds from the coronal hole opening, which is going to be a long-term sustained event. The arrival time. So our solar storm is going to start around New Caledonia, Solomon Islands region. It will peak in Western Australia. We'll be watching the Timor Sea. So this is during the time of the CME impact. This is the peak point. So during the uh, forecast model of the CME arrival from here to say the, in, uh, the Indian Ocean, However, folks, increased solar winds in of themselves result in geomagnetic instabilities and can have the uh, same impact. Remember, we're going to have these solar winds until at least the 23rd. So for at least three days, solar wind impact geomagnetic, uh, geomagnetic instability solar storms. It's going to impact Earth through three rotations, at least. As far as the CME is concerned, will we, uh, we will uh, suggest a high probability of a seismic and or volcanic response, including the rise of magma heat let's say from uh, Fiji all the way to Madagascar, Antarctica, up to Taiwan, so this entire region here, 
there's an increased possibility of a seismic response, volcanic eruptions. This is for the CME impact. So on the NOAA website, this is uh, the estimated planetary K index, which basically is the measurement of the irritability on our magnetic field, magnetosphere, geomagnetic instability. This is done in three hour uh, measurements. I do not follow this. There is a finer, me uh, finer measurement called the HP30 index, uh, done in 30 minute measurements. This is what I'll be watching. We'll also be watching what's called the BZ value measurement. Uh, this is very important. So let's uh, go through this. So the BZ value is uh, perpendicular to the ecliptic created by waves in the solar winds. So it'll ride in waves. How severe a solar storm will uh, depend on uh, the two opposingly uh, directed magnetic field lines. Uh, if they're brought together, the magnetic field lines leaving the Earth and the magnetic field within the uh, solar winds, CMEs. The IMF, the Interplanetary Magnetic Field, and Earth's geomagnetic field lines are uh, separate entities. So it depends on how they connect and the flow. If they, if they do couple together, then we get uh, geomagnetic instabilities or solar storms. So once again, the Earth's magnetic field lines leave the south polar region, envelop the Earth, and travel north, magnetic field lines, and re-emerge back to the north polar cusp. If the solar winds see me, he's traveling in the waves when they reach Earth. If they are flowing in the northern direction, in the same direction as the magnetic field line, they're just going to carry along with the magnetic field lines. If the IMF, when it reaches Earth, is flowing in the southerly direction, then it's going to make a connection with Earth's magnetic field. It's going to couple together, resulting in geomagnetic instabilities or solar storms. When the uh, solar storms or conditions uh, reaches us, it compresses the magnetos, the magnetopause, which is the side of the Earth's magnetic field facing the sun at any given time. So accelerated solar winds, such as we're going to be receiving at approximately the same time as the arrival of the CME, Increased solar winds in of themselves create geomagnetic instabilities. And we're going to have that for approximately three days. So geomagnetic instabilities, solar storms, it's going to be fluctuating over the next three days, depending on the BZ connection. So let's take a look at a magnetopause model. So another thing we have to be on watch for is uh, the CME incoming is from this region here, which... Uh, In another day or slightly less will be directly earth facing let's not forget about the one in the northern hemisphere here this one here has some potential of giving us a flare so uh X2, we'll be on watch for another one coming up. Now, if you want to know about the impacts on uh, us humans, inhabitants here on Earth, you can go to my YouTube channel, playlists, uh, space weather, biological health effects. I have quite a few videos there. Yeah, you should uh, watch those. Uh, finally, 
proton events, solar radiation storms, which is a separate event from uh, CMEs and solar winds. So sometimes when we have an explosive event from the sun, sorry for all the jerking around here, it's early in the morning, uh, they can eject uh, highly energetic particles, protons, in let's say tens of minutes after an event. So right now, as I've shown you, we're already at S3, solar radiation storm. Now, normally, folks, uh, those radiation particles will flow down the magnetic field lines into the north and south magnetic cusps, normally. If we are starting to develop a multipolar field, that radiation could be flowing into anywhere on the planet, beginning to. They will follow the magnetic field lines down into the magnetic cusps, normally. So once uh, proton events uh, reach a certain level, uh, civil aviation and military should be, are restricted from the polar regions because of the radiation risk to uh, flight crew and passengers. Uh, no polar region flights, they should be restricted. They should have been uh, already. Uh, but you know what, if we're developing a multipolar field, Eventually, this is going to be a global hazard. Eventually. So let's stay calm. Let's be aware. Let's be in knowledge of how it can affect us later on our planet. The planet would be responding in anywhere from 12 to 74 hours, 72 hours afterwards, maybe a little bit longer. So after we have a solar storm impact and the next day nothing happens, patience, wait, be prepared, be in knowledge, study how it can have, uh, uh, affect us humans. I've gone through the list a great many times and a little bit too tired this morning to go through it. Just go to my playlist, Space Weather Biological Health Effects. And, uh, Plan the next week accordingly. We'll see you later.